You'll forget the sun in his jealous sky as you listen to Kerblog. This is going to be a short solo one. It's been a uh, generally terrible week, so uh, I'm just doing this one solo real quick for you. Uh, these are two questions uh, tied together. The first one coming from Captain Shadow saying, Hey, Kerb, I've been a big fan of yours ever since 2010. I thought I could take a shot at asking you a question for Kerblog. How do you plan your stories? What I mean in that is how do you get to plan on what's going to happen next in your story or film? I'm right now trying to make a story of my own, but I'm kind of stuck on what else to write next. So I could use some advice. I hope you'll be able to read this question and answer it. Thank you. And then more to the point, the second version of this question was from uh, Luis Isidro. Could you help me along with others who struggle to set up a story? Is there a way you recommend plotting one out? Should we already know when different arcs should come up? How do you recommend setting one up? Um, so I'm going to say up front, obviously I am, uh, certainly no, <laughs> um, you know, expert at, at storytelling. I, I am certainly still learning. So I, I'm, I'm going to share some of the, the, I guess the, the tricks of the trade that I've sort of developed, uh, and learned myself, but, uh, I'm st they're still very much in practice for myself and I, I don't give any of these, um, these bits of advice with any sense of authority whatsoever. They're just, uh, you know, me sharing what it is that I've managed to do. So I hope you'll forgive me on that. But anyway. Um, so I've, uh, you know, a lot of people who've, who've known my work for, you know, a little or a long time know that I'm, I'm very fond of just the, you know, the long running, um, you know, story arc in terms of like having a series or, you know, but, but even I, I, I understand that in the sense of like a comic as well and, you know, or having a long story over the course of a game, uh, a long form story in general. Uh, I, I am definitely trying to look more into, um, you know, having a compressed still interesting and, and very profound story in a shorter span of time, like with a movie. Uh, that's something that I definitely want to move into doing in the, into the future. But uh, I've, for the most part, a lot of these things I'm going to be talking about are related to long-term long -term, uh, stories and in, in, in how they would be executed. So Tome, obviously, is the main example I'm going to use, as that is the, the, you know, the biggest one to my name. But uh, So for the most part, I would say in terms of just purely the plot, I would make sure that you map out the beginning, middle, and end, uh, you know, from the get-go. Uh, the middle, I think, is the area that definitely allows for the most uh, creative, you know, messing around with, but uh, you need to have a solid beginning, middle, and end in terms of, like, the overall theme of what it is that you're trying to say. That what I just said a second ago, what you're trying to say, that is a whole nother subject in and of itself that I think deserves its own curb log. And I've kind of touched on it before in uh, my one about the themes and the things that we watch and absorb and et cetera. Um, but it, it's still something that, that that's the heart of your story is what is it that you're trying to say? It doesn't necessarily matter. Like, you know, of course, it can be entertaining. It can be fun. It can be you know, moving or whatever, but it, it, it has to come down to like, what, what is the, what is the, the moral, what is the statement? What is the, the main theme of what it is that you're doing? Uh, that is the most important. Um, you know, that has to be at the core of, of the entire thing, really. The beginning and end in particular being important to have mapped out is because, you know, the, the setup of establishing your world and your characters at the beginning, you know, whatever way you choose to do that. Uh, cause you know, there are many ways to, to open things up. Uh, you know, that is incredibly important in terms of like hooking people and, and, you know, engaging their interest. And then the ending is of course, you know, just as important because it has to make the entire journey all worth it, you know, in, in whatever way, you know, you, you deem that to be worthy. It obviously it has to be worthy to you and, and, you know, worth it to you in, in the long run as well. Uh, the middle is, is what's open in, in terms of like, you can have fun and be creative as long as like you're carrying on the development and the the overall sort of theme of what you're of what you're going for um what i would say actually in that same route uh i'm sorry in that same note english um is that i would leave the middle open uh sometimes in terms of like being able to uh, uh to mess around with things that you may not have had in mind from the get-go and sometimes that can even impact the beginning and end depending on if you're you know how much of, of stuff in, in advance you're doing i mean obviously in my case i was just producing the episodes uh you know from the get-go and just moving forward but uh, but on that same note when i took the break with uh, tome season one and two that little break in between you know i reformatted some things and there were a lot of different ways that it could have gone i've, I've sent in some of the behind the scenes stuff like in the commentaries that it was almost going to be a movie would, would have been all of the season two plot comprised into one thing and then i didn't i decided not to go that route 
But either way, having that part of the story open enough for me to mess around with things after the fact was very beneficial because it didn't lock me into something that I couldn't get myself out of. Now, in terms of doing multiple arcs within a long story, uh, I think that that's perfectly acceptable to do because that can be really exciting and you can, you know, kind of have everything, the grand scheme of everything all be sort of tied together. Um, I think with, it's funny, again, once again, here we go with Dragon Ball Z with every Kurt vlog ever it has to be mentioned somehow. Um, with DBZ, I, I've noticed that I, this this happened with me and this happened with a lot of other storytellers and or people that I knew who wanted to be creators and make their own you know, insert whatever medium here, they got very, um, you know, excited by the whole idea of like having sagas as, uh, you know, Funimation like to describe, um, you know, where it's like, this is the Frieza saga and this is the Cell saga and this is the, you know, and then so they start planning their story in that kind of way where like everything is, you know, the, this is the this saga and this is the this arc and this is where this bad guy is the main thing. But like, you know, it, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, you know, like in the case of Toriyama with Dragon Ball, he, I don't, as far as I'm concerned, he did not plan to have things go that way. You know, there, you can read up on uh, Konzenshu.com. I'll have a link somewhere about the, uh, the intended endings, uh, throughout all of Dragon Ball, but more or less the, the different major arcs with those villains were not intended necessarily like, or rather they weren't, it's not that they weren't intended. It's that they weren't planned as far as like, you know, I'm going to do this arc about this bad guy. And then this arc about this, like they were completely just happenstance depending on you know how things went exactly you know so that's a whole thing in and of itself but but on that same note too kind of the magic of of what made dragon ball so special with toriyama storytelling is that things were left very open for him to just kind of you know mess around with on the spot and uh you know and especially in terms of the endings uh the, the multiple endings kind of throughout each of those arcs i'll come back to that later because i want to have a point about that but I also want to bring up uh, One Piece. So Ichiro Oda, the creator of One Piece, it's pretty clear that he has a, a bit of a bigger sense of planning uh, with his stories than, uh, than uh, well, at least than, than Toriyama did, but um, I guess maybe, maybe than, than other uh, Shonen Jump artists. But then again, I mean, it's very possible a lot of the other ones plan out their stuff. Like maybe that's just generally more accepted with how it goes. But, uh, but my point is, um, with One Piece, like, that is a case where you can break everything down into this is the, this arc and this island where they go to this thing and then they fight this bad guy or whatever. You could break it down into that necessarily. But in, in that case, it's a matter of each arc is a complete story with a beginning, a middle, and an end to it. And, you know, it's part of a grand, overarching grand, grand line. See what I did there? <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry. No, I'm not. Uh, it, it's part of a grand adventure uh, like the video game. I just can't stop with the awful jokes. One Piece is, what have you done to me? Um, but you know what I mean? Where it's, it's like, it, it's, a, it's a big overall story, and these are just chapters of it that are all, you know, it, you know in and of themselves, they, are, they have beginnings, middle, and ends for the characters that the Straw Hats, like the Straw Hat Pirates, the main characters that are consistent all throughout, they meet these characters on these particular locations, and those characters have their own arcs that are all, you know, collected into that. And what's great about setting things up that way is that it allows Oda the creative freedom to basically do whatever kind of stories he wants within the framework of his, you know, massive overarching story. Like Dressrosa is the current one that's running in the uh, anime in Japan and the manga right now, where they go to like kind of like a Spanish, Latino, Italian kind of crossbreed, Greek crossbreed kind of, you know, island of with all these different things, and you know, there's like a conspiracy with the, with its king and its former king is is you know living underground, and the society is all made up of like you know people who have got their had their memories blocked by this magic and all this crazy shit, and it's an incredible story, and it, it's it's all it, I think it's close to done in the manga right now, uh, and getting close to the end of the anime. It's one of those uh, Frieza situations where it's running almost neck and neck right now between the comic and the show. But, um, but yeah, and, and that's, that's one of the perfect things about One Piece is that it allows Oda to, you know, have that freedom to tell whatever kind of stories he wants within the framework of a bigger story. Uh, so allowing yourself that same kind of freedom where you can tell multiple arcs and do something interesting with them, that can be cool. But if you get too caught up in just, you know, like it's this bad guy at the core and then the, and the, and then the main characters have to defeat this, you know, in that kind of like black and white, you're just looking at DBZ and then there's nothing else to it that's a trap that I've seen a lot of people kind of fall into and it shouldn't be that way because there's something deeper to it. For example, with Tome, in a way you could say that season one and season two are two different arcs uh, in 
some in different kind of ways. What I decided to do with when I finished up season one, uh, and I wasn't sure if we were going to be continuing past that point at the time. I decided to make the the end of season one into the end of Alpha's developmental arc, more or less. Uh, now that doesn't mean that like you know he becomes a one note you know one dimensional character necessarily, because as people have been following, he still has a lot more things to do and a lot more things to handle uh, emotionally and physically, uh, you know, within the, the overall story. But, you know, when I established at the beginning that he was a shy kind of awkward kid who, you know, didn't have a full sense of confidence and faith in himself, you know, by the end of season one with that big battle with Zeto, uh, you know, I, I, he had fully grasped, okay, this is who I am. This is how I'm going to be. I have confidence in myself. I love my friends. I love this game. I love what I do. And, you know, this is, this is important to me. He had a, a firm grasp of his own life. And of course, obviously then in season two, even though he has that full grasp and he has that confidence, that doesn't mean that he doesn't still have things to do in the overall story. But on that same note, season two, I would say is probably more about curb slash Zeto's development because, you know, we saw the beginning of that towards the end of season one with kind of, you know, learning the secret about Curb and Zeto. You know, spoiler, sorry, but by this point, if you haven't watched my show, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. But if you haven't, you should go watch it. Anyway, um, yeah, the second season's arc, uh, was, the, the arc went within and of itself, was more about his development and his, uh, you know, trying to figure things out. And, of course, you know, peering back into the stuff that had happened even before season one with episode zero, we see the full context and the full scope of what it is that his, his deal is. So, you know, and now all the while, the overall progression of the plot of like, you know, so then this happens because this happens. And so, you know, and therefore this happens like, you know, which that's something that I learned from the South Park guys about if, if your story is, and then this happens, you know, for no reason, then you're fucked. <laughs> it's, it's probably the language, but I mean, you know, that's well, it's the South Park guys would expect. Um, yeah, so I, I made sure, of course, to still have the overall progression of the story, you know, from beginning to end, like I was saying. But this is the other thing, too. This goes back to my bit about leaving things open. Um, by, by not having absolutely everything planned, then when I got up to writing those individual episodes, I was able to, you know, really fine-tune and tweak the individual bits of development for the characters and, and sort of their path and what they were learning and what they were seeing and, and what was unfolding before them that was teaching them things and et cetera. And of course, obviously Liz was a big help on, you know, really getting to the, uh, the core of that. Uh, we really like honed in on a lot of the motivations of the characters that maybe wouldn't have been as clear if I had, you know, been doing the show entirely by myself. So, you know, major props to her for that. Um, but yeah, so, so there's that. And uh, those can be major things that'll help with like fleshing out everything. Um, another big thing, I guess, kind of on that same note, too, with, uh, with just the characters in general, because uh, I'm talking about the development of Alpha and Zeto. In, in the case of Tome, and this is a thing that I, I think I'm still definitely trying to ha have a firm grasp on, because it's difficult, and it, it's exciting to have a lot of characters. It's exciting to have a whole big, huge cast of characters and have a giant universe of characters to sink your teeth into. And that's a, that also is a whole other subject that I will probably do someday, because I have uh, some questions about that that are going to pertain to it. But... Um, making sure that all of your main characters have something important to do is incredibly important because if you have only a couple of the main characters, like really at the front, and of course, you know, some will take priority over each other. That's just kind of how it goes sometimes, but you, you definitely still need to make sure that all of them have jobs. They're not just, we're here too, because we're filling a quota or we're, you know, serving some, and, and you know, supporting characters can serve minor purposes or like, you know, ancillary tertiary characters, etc. They can serve minor purposes, of course, but all of your main characters have to have some kind of important purpose. That is incredibly important. Um, and, you know, I think with Tome, I definitely was able to capture that a bit better than I did with, say, you know, TV Tome Adventures, for instance, the previous version of it. Um, but even then, like, uh, there's still things about that that I really, really want to uh, improve on in the future. Um, I think I might have some more stuff. But I definitely want to hit up this bit about the endings. Uh, I was talking about this with uh, regarding to uh, Toriyama. You know, every time there was an end of a particular saga or arc with uh, DBZ, um, you know, whether it was intended or not, things were always left 
open. And even, you know, with the ending that we got in the manga originally with, you know, after Boo is defeated and Oob is there and Goku goes off to, uh, you know, to train him, you know, that was left open. Then, of course, that left open for Dragon Ball GT. But even GT's ending with little kid Goku and little kid Vegeta or whatever, you know, like the junior versions, that still left things open in case they ever wanted to do anything more. And, you know, by leaving that open, now we're getting Dragon Ball Super in a couple weeks from now. I can't believe that shit. We're getting that so soon. Oh, boy. Um, But yeah, so that was really beneficial because that allowed, again, more creative freedom. Now, certainly you could go the route of like, you know, say another Shonen Jump series, Naruto, where, you know, everything is wrapped up all neatly tied in a bow and everybody gets together and has kids like Harry Potter style. And, you know, and then, of course, there's still left open for more things. You could do stuff with the kid characters like the next generation. But, you know, I guess whether or not that's going to be interesting enough for people is yet to be seen. So, you know, who knows? But either way, it's still the same basic concept of, like, things were still left open enough to where you could do more. Um, I prefer things that way because I think that it that, that just – it's more interesting. And, again, like, if, say, something else happened and you can do more, like, hey, great. Like, that's fantastic. And that, that worked out incredibly well for uh, Avatar and Korra, I would say. You know what I mean? I, granted, I don't think we're going to get any more of Korra, but, I mean, just in general, like – it was still open for so much more. And, and, and actually, on that same note, it even what's great about that, too, is it leaves open interpretation for people who enjoy it, for fans to, you know, I'm not even just so much in, like, the, the oh, I'm going to write a fanfic or make a fan whatever creation of what I think happened next. I mean, I'm, I've, and that's cool, too, of course. But I'm saying that, um, you know, just leaving it open for, like, Im- your, the general imagination of, of your audience, I think, is also, like, extremely valuable to have. Uh, to not just like be committing to this is how it is and nothing else you know can possibly deter this because you know you don't want your story to be boring you want it to be because you know again it can be entertaining it can be fun or dramatic or or whatever or or heartfelt it can it can be all those things but it it, it has to it has to have something deeper to it and that's the last thing I'm going to go into again I feel like this could be its own curb blood topic but the most important thing above all of that with everything with your story is that you have to be very clear in what it is that you're saying, you know, or clear enough that, like, that is coming across. Because, you know, even if something is pure entertainment and there's, there's nothing deeper to it, like, it, it, it's – I feel like there's just no point if it's just, like, if there's nothing to say about it. Like, if, if you're not saying anything with it. Like, I, I think – I forget if I ever mentioned this on a curb, on another curb blog before, but I went to go see um, what was that movie? It was a, the live action Where the Wild Things Are movie, and it was fun. It was entertaining. It had some heartfelt and funny moments, and it was you know well directed. It looked beautiful, and it was acted well. And but it, it, I walked away from that movie with like nothing. I, I didn't know like what were you what were you saying about this movie? Or like uh, I, <laughs> this is a silly example, but like Doug's joke about um, what was that? Don Bluth movie, uh, the the uh, the troll in Central Park, where just like the end of it is like, Mom, can sometimes we do things that I want to do? It's like that that's that's what you're saying with this movie. That's your moral. That's your point. Is that it's like what the fuck, <laughs> you know? And that's I mean that's that's a more extreme example, I guess. And some of those movies I don't fully love, but I mean you know Don Bluth has done some some good stuff as well, so I, I can't fault them too hard. But yeah, I think that that is more important than ever. Like no matter what you do, is that you have to you know, you have to really make sure that you know what it is that you're saying. And, you know, it doesn't have to be something like so profound or so deep or important or whatever, but like you have to have a clear grasp of it because then, you know, and and, and then from there, then you apply all the things that I just mentioned and hopefully execute them to the best of your ability. Um, but all of it has to tie together to be something that is truly outstanding. You know, I mean, that's what it comes down to is like you, you, you typically you want to make something that is outstanding uh, unless you're making a toy commercial show. But I mean, even then, I mean, look at the stuff that we've gotten in, in, the, in terms of toy commercial shows like from Hasbro and all that. So, you know, that's then that's changed. And that's because it's like we need to have something that will make kids give a shit genuinely and emotionally about these characters. So then they'll buy the toys. <laughs> but again, whole other so many so many whole other subjects in this one. I guess that's going to wrap it up. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess in the comments below, let me know uh, your thoughts about this. If you have any other tips or things to add. I mean, again, I'm not expressing to be any kind of expert at this. Uh, you know, let me know your, your thoughts and ideas. And if you have ideas for future Kerblod topics, please let me know in the comments as well. And I'd be uh, happy to consider those. I'm still sitting at a bunch. I've got a bunch more planned uh, over the 
the next month and in July as well, but we'll get to those later. Uh, also, if you've not checked it out yet, please go watch uh, Tome Episode 14, Monstrosities, which I finished uh, a few weeks ago now, and we're working very, very, very hard on the season finale. But uh, we worked super hard on this one, uh, me and my whole my whole crew, and it's it's uh, packed with a whole lot of uh, drama. Uh, so please uh, do enjoy that. Go check it out if you get the chance. And uh, and then of course afterward, uh, again anybody who is going to Anime Expo in a couple weekends from now, uh, don't forget that on July fifth we'll be screening the final episode of Tome uh, on a panel on Sunday, July fifth at Anime Expo, the Los Angeles.